What is good, YouTube? It's your boy Savior reacting back with another video. So for today, we're going to be reacting to a new channel, um, and it's called Captain Midnight. And this video is called The Brutal Truth of Omni Man. I think everybody at this point knows that is a top tier show at this point. Especially because of that finale. I know the hype for it is like really up right now. And I'm really excited for seasons two and three because it was renewed and I'm really excited for those seasons. Hopefully they come out soon. Probably in like a year, maybe, I'm guessing. Because they need time to animate that stuff. But it deserves all the hype. And I've been reading the comics as well. I don't know why I have this in my hand. <laughs> Um, but I've been reading the comics as well, and the comic is really good, but they did change some stuff around in the show, so I don't know how they're gonna change it around, but, um, that first season was really good, even though they changed some things, so I'm excited to see what they do with season two and three. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they're gonna say about, um, Omni-Man, because his character is really interesting, um, he's gonna go through a lot of character development because i've been reading the comic as i said before um it's really good but yeah guys before we get into this video make sure you like comment subscribe and turn that post notification button so you get notified every time i post a video wait hold up i don't think i said this in my last reaction but you y'all need to drink your water never forget God damn right. Yeah. Y'all thought I forgot. But let's get right into this reaction, man. Let's go. So I probably waited too long to cover this show. But I decided to just go for it anyway because after watching the full season, I think it's more than deserving of its own video. Yes. Oh, and before I get into any of this, there will be full spoilers for the show so far. Anyway, after The Boys Season 2, I made a video focusing on Homelander. So it'll go watch the show. Like this video, take a look at Omni Man. You don't want any spoilers, is that good? Side, it's really interesting how well they reflect their comic book creators' feelings on the concept of superheroes. Both start from a premise that if superheroes were real, things would be a lot more brutal and a lot more ugly than they're depicted in the Marvel or DC universe. Mm -hmm. But Garth Ennis, the writer of the boys' comics, hates superheroes. Kind of with a passion, he's really happy to talk about it. Robert Kirkman, yeah. on the other hand, clearly loves them. This show isn't about eviscerating the concept of superheroes and more yeah. about playing with the tropes and expectations Ooh, that's that come a good with comparison. half a century of superhero stories. And Omni-Man is one of the biggest examples of that. In a way, he's kind of the show's calling card. The first indication that while this show may look a bit similar to Justice League Unlimited or a DC animated yes. film, it's playing by entirely different rules. So this week, let's dig into it's Omni-Man, way more graphic. father and greatest villain a lot of violence. Invincible! Where Homelander is a petty, vindictive man who is driven almost purely by his own emotions, yep. kind of like a toddler, Omni-Man is the opposite. He sees himself as serving the noble cause, far more important than him, a galaxy-spanning empire that he's devoted his life to. J.K. Simmons is famous for playing loud, abrasive characters. From his Spider voice Man is Whiplash. amazing. That, at least until the finale of this season, Omni-Man isn't really like that. In many ways, he's very cold and calculating. The first yep. episode ends with the shocking murders of all the Guardians of the Globe. But I don't think Omni-Man really has anything emotionally against them. To him, they were it's just a mission. pawns, used yeah. and discarded to set up bigger moves. I think that's why the violence in Invincible, especially in the Omni-Man scenes, never felt unnecessary to me. Because by showing it in its full horror, it really underlines just how disconnected he is from human life and yeah. how little it bothers him to just brutally kill the people he's called friends. In reality, Omni-Man is everything the young, naive Mark believes that he's becoming a superhero to stop. And in true Robert Kirkman fashion, he has to face up to that fact in an incredibly grueling way. It's a really blunt twist that the show is happy to reveal early on, actually far earlier than the comic book did. But it's not until yeah. the finale that we see the full extent of Omni-Man's cruelty. 
At first blush, Omni-Man seems like a pretty straightforward inverse of the Superman tale. A visitor from a different world coming to Earth to conquer instead of do good. Mm -hmm. He is a riff on Superman, as Kirkman will freely admit. But I think the show does a good job of fleshing out who he is and what he believes in in a way that adds more layers to the character. One scene I found myself thinking about once I had finished the season was his first time training Mark after they discovered yeah, they put some hard where he basically sucker punches the kid as the young hero is struggling to learn the ropes. It's one of the first times in the series where his true nature comes through around his family, even though mm -hmm. it's under the guise of tough love. In retrospect, it's really clear that he was just frustrated with Mark because he was failing. He was doing poorly. As we see later on, yeah. there's no place for that on Viltrum. You just really you angry. or you die. Which is why his behavior towards Mark changes so much after he gets his powers. Because he's not a human anymore, no one actually expects something from him now. He's gonna push him like it would to also the limit. Be a lie to say that every aspect of Nolan's home life was a put on or a facade. If that was the case, he would have killed Mark once and for all in the finale. But he can't yeah, bring himself to brutal. do it. I'll be honest, I've only read the first six issues of the comic, and that was a really long time ago. So right now, I'm just enjoying not knowing where this story is going to go from here. And one of the biggest questions I have is about Omni-Man's motivation. Did he spare Mark because humanity had really rubbed off on him? Like a part of him has really become Nolan Grayson, the loving family. Yeah, I'm thinking that's what happened. actually that Mark's potential as a Viltrumite is something that he doesn't want to lose? Maybe he's become so attached to this vision of conquering Earth with his son by I his think it was the first one because... He doesn't want to give up on that dream. Even though for Mark reasons makes I cannot say. it clear that it probably won't happen. I'm not sure even Omni-Man himself knows the answer, and it's that inner conflict that really elevates the character above what I expected going into the show. Speaking of characters, one that I kept thinking about while watching Invincible was actually Zack Snyder's take on Superman. This mm -hmm. alien who is constantly plagued by questions of morality and trying to figure out what he owes humanity. Omni-Man's answer is basically nothing. Yeah, he can talk about how great everything would be for humanity under Viltrumite rule, but it's pretty clear that that's just the empty propaganda of an empire. We learn later that Alan the Alien's planet was entirely destroyed for not giving in to their rule. Yeah. So it's pretty safe to say that the health and future of the planets they conquer isn't exactly Alan's a cool the dude. priority list. Especially One in the giant show. bomb that Nolan drops on Mark is the revelation that he's basically a mortal. And he tries to use that as a justification for why Mark can and should stop caring about every human he knows. And this method of winning Mark over was always kind of doomed to failure. And the fact that Omni-Man thought this would work makes me believe that he really has learned nothing about humans or how they think. Which makes a lot of sense as he clearly isn't very interested in them, even if his son was raised as a human. Saying that he thinks of Mark's mom as more of a pet in a big speech trying to bring him to his side yeah. are not the words of someone who understands Mark or what he believes at all. Nolan leaves his son in bloody shambles on the top of a mountain after subjecting him to some of the worst violence Mark has ever seen. It's a brutal sequence, and one that Very. perfectly makes sense for Omni-Man. Of course his way to win Mark over to his side is to beat the shit out of him, because that's how he's always solved pretty much every problem. Yeah, he's that's all he knows is violence. On Earth, there's not been very many issues in his life that he couldn't fix by simply existing as the most powerful being on the planet. But winning Mark over is something that all of his power and might can't do, because every punch and brutal yep. murder that he commits is just driving his son farther and farther away. When faced with that, but also unable to put an end to Mark, there was nothing left for him to do but fly away in tears. So far, I've yeah, mostly focused leave. on the relationship between Nolan and Mark, but Debbie Grayson is definitely worthy of discussion too. Yes. And the season ends in an understandably really dark place for her. We didn't get that much backstory for her and Nolan as a couple, but I think what we do get is well executed. We learn that Debbie's first impression of Nolan was that he was a huge jerk who expected her to be almost worshipful of him right off the bat. Huh. First impressions no. can be wrong a lot of the times, sure, but in this case, her first first impression was definitely more correct about who he was than their 20 years of marriage that came after. The cynical reading of their relationship is just that Nolan learned how to fake everything. 
love, empathy, compassion. He was really There's good at quite a bit of truth to acting that, through that. Him fly into space after everything but some done, of it was true. Crying makes me think that it wasn't totally fake. He can't be that perfect Viltrumite when his family is involved. Unfortunately for Earth, though, it seems like those feelings don't extend beyond Mark and maybe Debbie at all, which hopefully will lead us to a great season two. Back to Mark though, I love the moment where he begins to learn who his dad really is and just can't accept it, assuming that he's been mind controlled. It's solid writing because I think it's kind of operating on two levels. The first is that in a Marvel or DC story, that probably would be the explanation. The good guy mind turns control. evil because he's under the control of a villain is a story that's been told. A oh, I noticed that too, like. And Mark has kind of gone his whole. Like, whenever Omni Man did something terrible, uh, the other characters automatically assume that he's being mind controlled. That's what happened in the first episode when he started killing everybody. Um, I think Immortal was talking to War Woman and told her that he might be mind controlled. And then Mark saw they killed Immortal in front of his eyes and then... Uh, Mark automatically assumed that he was mind controlled, so. And that's what happens in a lot of uh, comics like DC and Marvel, which um, this um, show is supposed to be like, but that's not what's happening. And that's a good um, like writing tool that he used. Life, believing that he lives in a Marvel style universe. The other is that it just really shows how much Mark has always looked up to Nolan and the very idea of Omni Man. His father being evil can't possibly be true, and even up until the very last minute of Nolan murdering a defenseless pilot right in front of his eyes, he's unable to accept it. But eventually, he really has to. One common criticism of superhero comics is that nothing really has stakes because things always have to come back to that status quo eventually. And oftentimes that is true, even if I'm generally willing to just set it aside to read a great story. Invincible really wants to upend that. The stakes are high and things are definitely not returning to any sense of normalcy. Omni-Man started the season appearing to be the Earth's greatest hero and ends it being who he really was all along. Yeah. A brutal conqueror and the planet's greatest threat. What if Superman was evil is a concept I've seen done plenty of times, yeah, a lot of times. including in the pages of DC Comics. But mm -hmm. Nolan may be the most compelling version of it I've ever seen on screen, and I can't wait to see what they do with him going forward. So I think we can all agree be interesting. I can tell you that anytime soon. But if you are just a little bit jealous of Rudy's problem solving skills, Brilliant is for you. It teaches a huge range of subjects, not by making you memorize formulas. But yeah, that was a good dissection of Omni Man's character. Um, a lot of it was very true. Yeah, Omni Man's character is really turning out to be very interesting in the comic, but uh, I can't wait to see what they do with it in the show because they're changing some things up i don't know if they're gonna change it like do a complete like 360 but they might change a couple things but it should be interesting because they're doing a really good job already um but yeah guys i'll be the end of the video make sure you like comment, subscribe and turn that post notification button so you get notified every time i post a video and i'm gonna be out